I'm Brian Francis. Uh, I'm from the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, and I'm the head of the glaucoma division there. And I would like to talk today about my experiences with uh, trabectome surgery for glaucoma. I've been one of the original uh, adopters of the trabectome technique, and I found it to be extremely useful in, in managing uh, glaucoma patients in my practice. I think it has uh, a good wide variety of applications in different forms of open angle glaucoma. It can be performed as a standalone procedure in patients with high intraocular pressure. It can be performed uh, in patients that have combined cataract uh, procedure at the same time. And it has very good efficacy in, in both of those scenarios. I do have a lot of unusual patients or unusual scenarios uh, that are sent to me. In particular, these are patients that are not good candidates for traditional glaucoma filtering surgery. So we're talking about procedures that have uh, external dissection with uh, the diversion of, of the aqueous or the fluid inside of the eye to the subconjunctival space, so-called external filtration. Uh, sometimes these patients have risks of infection. Uh, they can have problems with the bleb, which is the fluid bubble that's created in the white part of the eye. So we look at alternative procedures that don't rely on bleb formation and external filtration. Trabectome is one of those surgeries that's done through what we call an internal approach. So you make an incision uh, opposite in the eye and you go, you approach the drainage system from an internal approach rather than an external dissection. Uh, also, it's designed to re-establish uh, outflow by removing some of the uh, outflow resistance inherent in the tissues of the drainage system. And it, by doing that, it reestablishes drainage through the natural outflow pathway rather than trying to create an artificial drainage pathway that you would see in a trabeculectomy or a tube shunt. So that's a good question in, in terms of when do you consider this, the surgery a success or failure. I think at the one month time period, it's a pretty good indicator of the way things are gonna go. But I think at three months, you really have a great idea of whether the pressure is going to stay down or whether, it's going to, whether the surgery is going to be successful or not. I've always been interested in, the, in eyes and eye pathology. Most ophthalmologists wear glasses, and so I've, I've been wearing glasses since I was a young age, so I've always been interested in the visual system. Uh, and then I, I went into glaucoma uh, primarily because during my residency, I saw a lot of glaucoma patients with very bad disease and, and blindness, and so it motivated me to, to go into that field to try to make a difference in those patients. Uh, my philosophy of, medic of medicine is to do what's best for the patient, uh, to include the patient in the decision-making process, but to guide them in that process and, if necessary, to lead them and, and uh, let them know, you know if I have a strong recommendation. But I think uh, medicine and the treatment of glaucoma especially is a, it's a partnership between the patient and the doctor. And uh, you know, there has to be an open discussion. They have to be honest with each other. The patient needs to be, and be honest with themselves in terms of you know, taking medication, the ability to take medication, the need for follow-up. You know, so I think it's a, and it, because it's a lifelong disease, it is something that you know, the patient and the doctor kind of enter into that relationship together.